What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and to kick off my series of DreamWorks reviews I'm here to let you know that Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas is no perfect movie. And in this movie Sinbad played by Brad Pitt is accused of stealing the Book of Peace which protects the kingdom of Syracuse Sicily. But his best friend who happens to be Prince of Syracuse played by Joseph Fiennes gives Sinbad 10 days to find and retrieve the book. If he doesn't Prince Proteus will be executed in his place. The good news is Sinbad knows who took the book. The problem is the thief is Goddess of Chaos Eris, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, who does absolutely everything in her power to make sure that he's completely sabotaged. This is actually the 2D DreamWorks movie that I saw the most of as a kid, and that's mostly because my neighbor owned it on DVD. And this is actually the last 2D DreamWorks movie that they ever made, mostly because... It just didn't make enough money, and while it's really easy to assume that it came from the fact that it's a 2D movie, when you look at the other movies that came out the exact same week, like Terminator 3, Legally Blonde 2, Charlie's Angels 2, and a week later Pirates of the Caribbean, another pirate adventure movie that's just like, well, pirates only work in live action, I guess we better toss away the animation. Here's a fun little fact, Jeffrey Katzenberg, head of DreamWorks. Why don't you fucking market your movies properly? At least you didn't do a good job back then, because I gotta be completely honest. DreamWorks movies, when I was a kid, I heard about them through my parents. I didn't see trailers on TV. I didn't see posters anywhere on the computer or in real life. I only found out that Sinbad, Spirit, and El Dorado exist because my neighbors had them. And you know what? It's... It's a real shame that DreamWorks didn't do more 2D movies because Prince of Egypt was the only big hit that they had. El Dorado bombed big time, Spirit was only a modest hit, and people kind of forgot about it afterwards, and this was just the final nail in the coffin. But idiocy aside in regards to studio marketing, how is Sinbad? That's good. It's not great, but it's good. For starters, most of the voice actors do a really good job. Brad Pitt has that swashbuckling charm that you would expect from Sinbad. He's incredibly cocky. He's really badass. At least he seems to think he is. He has a ton of respect for his crew. He wouldn't do anything that he wouldn't do himself. But what I was surprised by with the script was how they took the happy-go-lucky persona that Sinbad has and turned it into a cover for this much more brooding and insecure personality of his because... He's seen his best friends who are in legitimate professions grow up to become much more successful and accomplished than he is. And I think him being a pirate captain is his idea of compensating for trying to get his own accomplishments by taking them from others. It isn't until Proteus puts his life on the line that Sinbad realizes he actually has the potential to do good for some people. He just has to put in the effort to achieve those accomplishments. The big surprise in this movie, for sure, was Catherine Zeta-Jones as Marina. She is Proteus's fiance. She stows away on Sinbad's ship to make sure that he actually goes out on this mission, let alone gets the job done. And what really surprised me was how well-written she was. This is the type of female character that I hope for in movies nowadays. A character who is not so useless that she has to be rescued every five minutes. A character who is not so invincible that they really could accomplish everything on their own, but they're a side character regardless. Marina in this movie is an equal, and it is so rewarding to watch her show off her sailing skills and have Sinbad's crew be eternally a grateful, inter eternally grateful in an instant. They absolutely idolize her. They do everything for her in a split second, purely out of love, and... It was just so fun to watch, and it made me realize that characters like her aren't, are nothing new nowadays. They've always existed. We just have to look for movies with characters like her. Now, aside from Sinbad and Marina, the other characters themselves are kind of forgettable. The only crewmate that really sticks out for me was Sinbad's second-in-command, played by Dennis Hebert, and that's mostly because of his deep, dark voice and his incredibly noticeable design, if you know what I mean. 
And Michelle Pfeiffer as Eris is by no means a complex or really all that interesting villain. It's really just how much she chews the scenery as this quietly, deliciously evil goddess. And just how fluid the animation is on her. She's the type of shape-shifting goddess, and it leads to some really creative moments where she morphs into things, she teleports, she turns invisible, she does all these cool things, and the animators do some really Oscar-worthy stuff. And that's probably the best thing about Sinbad for sure. The animation in this movie is really impressive. The characters move at such a fast and fluid pace that gives each scene the certain amount of energy that you would come to expect from an action-adventure movie, the 3D monsters themselves are for the most part well integrated. Some of them really stick out in regards to their textures, but they're filmed in such a wide scope compared to these teeny tiny humans that it more than it more than makes up for it personally. The action scenes have all these sweeping camera movements, kind of like Treasure Planet or Hunchback of Notre Dame, where there are multiple shots in one take. You're really in the moment with these characters as they're planning their next escape, their next battle. And the thing that's so great about the action is that it emphasizes characters using their wits, using strategies, using whatever they can to escape from these creatures as opposed to just using a sword or a cannon. And for using intelligence as opposed to just physical strength, you have to make it look really exciting. You have to make it seem like it's a chase. And that's exactly what this movie does. So okay, this movie has good voice acting, has a fun enough villain, some well-written enough writing, and some animation that actually does lead to some fun action. And that's what makes Sinbad good and worth one watch. One of the things that keeps it from being great is the pacing. As I said before, it really does move at a rapid pace as an action-adventure movie, which most people would generally expect, but... When it comes down to character development, it's mostly summed up through these really quick exposition conversations or through some very obvious foreshadowing about the twists in regards to the characters, like the connection between Sinbad, Proteus, and Marina. It didn't always make sense. Now, don't get me wrong. Why anyone would fall in love with Marina in this movie, that makes perfect sense to me. The thing is I didn't really understand what it was about her that I just couldn't understand why she fell in love with Sinbad. As I said before, he is kind of a coward who overcompensates based on his own insecurities, based on his jealousy for just how successful his friends turned out. So I'm not really sure what was so redeeming about him that Marina thought was enough to like fall in love with him and want to run away with him. Which, you could chalk it up to the arranged marriage that she has with Proteus where they're friends, but they're not really in love, and I understand that, but it wasn't really enough for me to sell the romance. But the biggest problem for me personally in regards to this movie is that the rules of the world building just make absolutely no sense. Like, you're in a world where these giant sea monsters exist, and yet if you meet a god or goddess and you say, hey... I met this god or goddess, they're kind of into me. Everybody just laughs at them and says, that's ridiculous, there's no such thing. And I'm like, there are statues of gods and goddesses, and yet Eris is the only god or goddess in this movie, let alone the only one who's even referenced. So, yeah, I'm kind of wondering where the other gods were that they couldn't just help out Sinbad, who was clearly innocent of everything. And, by the way, the Book of Peace in this movie... It's a MacGuffin. It's just a MacGuffin. I have absolutely no idea what it is that protects the kingdom of Syracuse from anything. What would really happen if Syracuse was without any magical protection? When was the last time it even had any actual chaos or destruction? Because it says that it's been protect the book's been protecting people for the past a thousand years, and yet they're just bringing it to their kingdom. Like, if. If you guys have been fine without this book, what what exactly do you have to lose? What else does this goddess of chaos do to other kingdoms? Because outside of this movie, we really don't know anything else about her, what she's capable of, what other gods and goddesses think of her. Like the the world building 
is so underdeveloped that all these unanswered questions just feel more like plot holes as opposed to just being left up to interpretation. And when it comes down to the character moments where they're just explaining their past and what they expect in the future and absolutely nothing else, the script doesn't really give these characters a chance to breathe, to soak in the magic of being on this adventure, being in the open sea, fighting these really badass monsters. If you if you were to spend more time on these characters, at least five minutes or so, just admiring the scenery, or at least showing the characters' emotions through their expressions, through their body language, there are moments where they do show off their emotions through their expressions, but it's mostly towards the very end. For the beginning and middle, you don't get any scenes like that. At least, I didn't really feel it. Overall, Sinbad is good for at least one watch based on its production value. It's incredibly well animated. The voice actors do a good, if not great, job. It's just the unexplained questions that the script offers doesn't really make it rewatchable. But nonetheless, I did have a good time watching Sinbad, and I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Sinbad, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for three more DreamWorks reviews and some reviews of movies that I saw in 2019 but didn't get the chance to review. So, regardless, be sure to stay tuned for future content and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.